Well, we know how to create new processes now. We know how to get two actors standing on the stage reading from the same script. But very often we want one of those processes, usually the child, to go and execute a different program. And for this, we need one of the exec family of system calls. Basically, exec causes the current execution image of a process to be replaced by the image of a new program. Here's an example. The first argument here is the path name of the new executable image. The remaining arguments are the argument list, the command line arguments, if you like. Um, these will be passed through via the argv array of the program, as we saw in an earlier lesson. And that list needs to have a zero or a null to terminate it. Now, if the exec succeeds, it never returns. The process is now off executing a different program. The only case in which the exec will return to us is if it fails. That's usually because either it can't find the executable image or it doesn't have execute permission on it. To go back to my actor and script analogy, an exec is like an instruction in the script that says, put down this play and go and pick up Macbeth. So the actor does that, he opens the play called Macbeth, and he starts reading at the first page. Now it turns out that there are seven variations on exec, and in an attempt to make sense of them, I've drawn a sort of decision tree. The first decision is how do you want to find the executable? Do you want to specify a full path name? Or do you want to look on the search path as defined by the path environment variable? The next decision is how do you want to pass the environment? Uh, do you want to pass on a brand new one? Or do you want to just inherit the one that you've got? And the third decision is how do you want to pass your command line arguments into the new program? Do you want to pass it as a list or as an array? And there are versions of exec that I'm showing here uh, for each of these cases with one exception. There is no call for the case I've shown here. I suppose it, if it existed, it would be called exec LPE. But for some reason, there is no such function. Now, these seven variants of exec look confusing, but there is method in the madness, or at least in the choice of names. If the name has a P in it, we will use the search path to find the executable. If the name has an L in it, the arguments are passed as an explicit list, or if it has a V, they're passed as a vector, an array. Finally, if the name ends in an E, we get to pass a new environment. Otherwise, we simply stick with the one we've got. Let's have a look at some examples of calls. Uh, these two lines are just defining an argument list and an environment. We'll use those in the calls lower down the page. Exec L here is receiving an absolute path name and an explicit list of arguments. Exec LE, the E on the end, means that we also get to pass a new environment. Here we're passing our argument list as an array, argv, rather than as an explicit list of arguments. And this is the same, but we've got a new environment on the end as well. And then we have uh, similar versions with a p on the end of the name. And in each of these cases, the executable name is looked up along the search path. Let's see exec in action. I've got a program here called Tiny Menu. It's uh, very primitive and clunky, but it's about the simplest example I could come up with of a call to exec. And the idea is that we present a simple menu to the user, and he or she is meant to select by entering the appropriate number which program they want to run. These numbers are read into the variable i and they're used to index into this array of command names that's defined up here. 
Here's the actual exec call. Notice the P on the end means we're going to look the command name up on the search path. Here we are passing the first command line argument, argv0, this will end up in. And this is the end of the argument list. Now if all's well, we're out of here. We're now executing the selected program. Only if the exec fails do we come down here and print command not found. So let's build this. OK, we'll run it. And here's the prompt. Uh, let's uh, run the date command first. So we'll select option 2. And there's the output from date. Now you notice this is a bit of a one-shot affair because we're now back at the original shell command prompt. We can't loop around within tiny menu and prompt for another selection because once we've done the exec, we've lost control out of the program. So run it a couple more times. We'll select uh, option zero there uh, and we see the output from the ps command. And then one final time, let's select this non-existent program called Goof. And we see there the error message that's been printed because the exec command has failed and returned back into the tiny menu program.